Welcome to another episode of Gift from the Galactic. I'm your host, Sabrina Savoy, an Asui Reiki Master Teacher, Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner, as well as a Meditation and Qigong Instructor. Today, I am going to bring you information about the star called Hadar and how it is illuminating this up and coming full moon on November the 15th, 2024. This full moon is the fourth and final super moon of 2024, and it is opposite a star called Hadar. Hadar is found in the bottom of the Centaurus constellation near the Southern Cross, which is also called Crux, which is in the southern part of the sky. Hadar is a binary star, which is about 190 light years away from Earth. A binary star means that there are actually two stars and sometimes one or both stars will rotate around one another or there is a common center point. But from Earth, it looks like just one big giant star and the color that Hazar shines towards Earth is a bluish white color. Dar is a beautiful and peaceful place that I have seen in the Akashic records. I have had several quantum soul guidance clients with prominent Hadar placements, as well as my own, which is located in Mars with a Scorpio stellium. On November 15th, the Hadarian energy is not only coming in through our moon, but also our sun. It is in conjunction with our sun and opposite our moon, making it easy and challenging to integrate some of this energy coming in. On the full moons, our sun and moon are always opposite one another, which creates a symbolic bridge marking one point to another which is allowing us to stream a full spectrum of what's in alignment. Hadarians have mastered spiritual evolution. They are magnificent healers and they emit a frequency that ignites in the people of the earth the will to perceive higher dimensions. Hadar is also home to many high vibrational souls that need assistance with stepping down their natural frequency before heading to earth. Hadarians have mastered spiritual evolution using the divine frequency of pure universal love to shift dimensions. And this energy flows freely among the sacred star. Hadar is also home to those souls that need to rebuild strength before or after coming to earth, much like a vacation spot to nourish and recharge the soul with divine love. Hadar's gift to humanity is to shift dimensions. They help us to move from three from 3D to 4D by encouraging the people of Earth to use love to shift their vibrational states. Love is necessary for our human evolution, and the Hadarians know this because this is how they became the masters of their spiritual evolution. To make frequency shifts in your own life, one must heed the wisdom from Hadar and remember that through caring, compassion, trust, free will is honoring and utilizing love, creating love frequencies that will flow and ripple out and eventually leading to the inspiration of others. Some of the main key points I want you to keep in mind when you see Hadar in your chart or when it's involved in another new moon or full moon. Hadar is a very beautiful star and it is in the constellation Centaurus. 
So just keep these little things in mind that their gift to humanity is to help us shift dimensions through the power and frequency of love. Now, I'm going to share with you one personal story of how I'm utilizing this Hadarian energy, even though it all started unconsciously. I just want to point out one more thing about Hadar, just to make sure this point really stands out. The Hadarian energy is very healing. So if you experience a spontaneous shift or healing during this time, I would like to ask you to look to the sun or moon and thank Hadar for emitting this powerful transference of healing towards you. And in turn, you emit the frequency of gratitude towards them. This is a beautiful way to keep the balance in the the relationship and the balance of earth and cosmos. So just keep that in mind when you're working with the stars. All right. So here's my personal story in a very short version, trying to leave out pieces and just get to the good stuff. Okay. So um, I've been working with the elementals for a good part of my life. And I didn't really know that. I wasn't always aware of that, but I knew I always was drawn to the dragons and fairies, winged lions, pegasus, unicorns, and more. (laughs) I have dreams of them. They visit me when I'm doing one-on-one energy work sessions and even group sessions. And I even get special appearances from them when I'm doing my own personal meditations. Now, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, sorry, I did recently lose my voice um, and it's just coming back now. (laughs) Um, So a couple of weeks ago, I was doing some work and I'm still working on it now. I think it's gonna be a lifelong uh, journey. Uh, I'm working on bridging together my multi-dimensional self. Um, And the Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner course with Julia Balaz has been an instrumental part of revealing this to me. So in the description to this video, I'm going to link her course below um, because it is so transformational. (laughs) But um, I decided to bring up at the dinner table with my kids and my husband uh, that I believe in dragons, fairies, unicorns, and more. I was very high energy when I proclaimed this, and I proceeded to say, I need to apologize to them for not always believing in them. So I continued to make my peace with them out loud in front of my family. And then after that, they all chimed in and shared their peace as well. And from that day, a couple of weeks ago, something shifted. And I also wrote in my journal, um, like the way I would write an apology letter to someone asking for their forgiveness, very sincere, because I truly genuinely felt it in my heart. And also forgiving myself for not believing in them. So this happened a couple of weeks ago. And then yesterday on November 11th, I was called to the lake by my house. So I drove up there and then I um, walked out. I stood upon some rocks and I began to feel the water dragons moving under the lake. So the video I'm showing you now is, is of this time yesterday at the lake I was working with. So these water dragons were purifying the ley lines that run under this body of water. They were waiting for me. I could feel it. They needed a conduit to move some stagnant energy that has been sitting there. And I know with all my heart that these kinds of movements are happening all over the world. These divine elementals, including the dragons, are returning to our consciousness. 
They're waiting for those of you that are willing to remember them and invite them into our awareness. I have been reminded that we need to offer these beautiful elemental beings an apology. A sincere apology from the heart for not believing in them, for thinking they are only fantasy or things that belong in fairy tales and movies. An apology for not allowing ourselves to believe in them because it is thought to be childish or too wildly impossible. Now here's where Hadar's magic is really working because one of their gifts to humanity is saying, keep an open mind and practice non-judgment. I'm continuously practicing non-judgment towards myself for choosing to believe in these higher dimensional beings. These beings that I am working with are to be met with respect and an apology for our disbelief, which hurt them. Right now, I see that Hadar is assisting with our rise in awareness, going from 3D to 4D to 5 and beyond. The message I received is that this, this is part of the unification process. We are all starting to come back to our place of wholeness. And that requires us to make amends with our relationship with the elementals. And as we work on this unification bridge or process, we are accelerating our spiritual healing and increasing our frequency at the same time. This full moon on November 15th is also sextiling Merkab, a star in the Pegasus constellation, which represents telepathy. So I'm asking you to pay attention to seemingly random thoughts um, as they are probably messages and answers or even clues to your divine prayers. Or if you really want to reach out to someone, I think you should because that person is probably thinking of you. I've noticed that in my personal life just the past couple days, I'll reach out to someone and their response is, I was just thinking about you. So just honor those hunches that you're feeling. And finally, this is a super key point that I feel excited to bring up in this conversation is Uranus, the planet Uranus will be beside the moon during the full moon on November 15th. And Uranus is conjunct Al Gol in the Perseus constellation. Now, I love the planet Uranus and what it symbolizes. So it symbolizes evolution. It symbolizes genius, nonconformity, electric and eccentric energy, as well as intellectual sight, change and revolution. Um, and when I think of Uranus with the message of Hadar, it just like blends together so well, like two hands that are being held and walking us on this journey forward. And now we add in Al Gol, and Al Gol is bringing in the message of our life purpose. Our goal encourages us to prepare for understanding our own destiny and our life purpose. And sometimes we know what this purpose and destiny is, but we have a hard time accepting it because it looks different than what we thought. Um, and I know that feeling very well. I've imagined something so detailed and then when it finally arrived I didn't quite believe it because it wasn't as I saw but it was exactly what I needed so our goal is helping us to make 
that acceptance, the acceptance of the destiny and the life purpose. So it's such a beautiful marriage during this full moon. When I read the placements of Hadar, the moon representing our soul, Uranus representing the evolution plus Merkab and Al Gol, I sense that many of us are finally, and this this is already happening. If you're watching this video, it's already been happening to you even before the 15th and a little bit after the 15th, that a lot of loose ends in our false programming and lower consciousness are finally dismantling. They're like really turning to ash and that beautiful Phoenix is going to rise up soon. And these are the steps we're taking to assist the Phoenix and its evolution. So we are deprogramming the false programs and we're starting to believe in a love that is so unifying that it is going to shift dimensions. And this allows us to perceive other dimensions and higher dimensions. So connecting to the elementals, the dragons, the fairies, the pegasi, whatever it is that you're feeling called to, even the Yeti and the Sasquatch. So more of our multidimensional self is, is becoming apparent to many of us. So my parting words on this full moon episode are going to be may the white and golden dragons blow their fiery breath of peace and purity and awakening upon you so mote it be namaste